And John, it's a pleasure to have you again. A pleasure to be here. Arjun, uh, you have played many roles uh, beyond mentoring and empowering entrepreneurs, uh, co-founder of HCL, then you know, at the company after that, another one now, uh, you're addressing a very critical need in India as an entrepreneur, which is addressing the needs of the bottom of the pyramid in the healthcare segment. So we'd be happy to learn from you how you're addressing that. You know, uh, what we're doing, and I'll give an example, that's the best uh, uh, way to say what, what we're doing. Uh, the director at All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Patna, which is the new AIMS that has been set up. There are a few that have been set up around the country. Uh, he decided to look at uh, villages an hour away from where he's located uh, and said that, you know, he'd like to try and do some preventive uh, type work there. So we set up kiosks, or he set up kiosks with a trained healthcare worker. Uh, we gave him a software that will allow them to interact intelligently from a medical point of view. And uh, he had in his conference room a doctor from every discipline for two hours a day. And they would set up time on video Skype and uh, talk. And uh, we found that the load on the hospital from those areas reduced by about 30, 35 percent. And so we decided to expand the uh, proof of concept, so to say, to 36 locations. And we did that and really, as I said, 30-40% reduction. So then we worked with an NGO and we are now setting up these uh, at 450 locations around AIMS. Uh, they've got 10 doctors 24-7. We've now upgraded the software obviously based on the inputs. And uh, patients can come in, they ask questions, their background is available to the doctor immediately so the turnaround is a lot quicker. Uh, we charge 15 rupees per transaction, which is easily affordable by uh, anyone, even in a village. And uh, it doesn't, they don't hesitate to spend that money. It's not something that, uh, and we find that uh, the load, according to the AIMS folks, is expected to go to 11,250 patients a day that they're able to service from here. Looking at this, actually, the railways now want to put it at every railway station, even on trains for their passengers. They want to provide that service through doctors in railway hospitals. And uh, in fact, uh, with this recent earthquake in Nepal, uh, put a lot of load on the Patna hospital because that part of Bihar also had got affected. And the BSF is now looking at putting it at 1500 locations where it will serve their own people as well as the villages around the border area who can then get expertise from AIMS to help them solve their problems. And so it's really, really, I mean, it, it's satisfying to do that. I and mean, we did a lot of other things, and I can talk about some of the other things that we did at AIMS, uh, Patna, because we were there for a while. But uh, it's, it's really interesting, and it's, it's, you feel really good that you're able to provide some level of health care to people who would not have got even that uh, if you hadn't done this at a price they can afford. And the good news is with the volumes that you have, it becomes commercially viable. Uh, and so you're not, I mean, while you're doing social entrepreneurship, you're actually making some money on it, which is the best way to do more of it. That was going to be my next question, because when you're hitting the bottom of the pyramid and serving them, it starts as a philanthropy, then goes into social entrepreneurship. It's still early stages because I think we are still trying to find our footing in India. But do you think moving forward there's going to be a sustainable business model for people who are passionate to, to carry forward this thing? No, absolutely. I expect this. In fact, we have now adapted that software to be able to go to big cities and commercial hospitals. And uh, we've signed up over 50 hospitals. In fact, we're running behind on uh, installation and delivery uh, so that they can serve their patients. Because the problems in a city are different. It's I spend half a day, two hours going, one hour waiting, two hours coming back if I want to ask the doctor a question. Right. Why can't I do it through a smartphone and software? But, you know, as we looked at this, the other things we noticed was uh, patients at the hospital at Ames Patna, a large percentage of them came in autos, three-wheelers. Right. And so we thought, this is strange. So we asked them why. And they said, look, you know, cars and ambulances can't get through streets in Patna. They're crowded, they're small, but these autos sort of like mosquitoes make their way around. And so what we did was we developed a Hindi-based app for them for smartphones, and everyone has a smartphone in India. And the director himself spent a number of weekends at the Central Park 
downloading it on auto rickshaw driver's smartphones and sort of up training them a little bit. And so today, if you have that app and you're in Patna, you fall down, you break your hand, you press it, and there's something that says, I am injured, you press, I am injured. From the smartphone GPS, they know where you're located. They know where 10,000 of these autos are located. They'll call an auto nearby and say, pick that guy up and get him to the hospital. So as the director says, I've got 10,000 ambulances roaming around the city all the time. So you know, think of it, you, when you do it, you think, man, this is relevant technology for India. Why can't I do this in every town? And so now we are looking at seeing how we can expand this. It's a pro bono thing, but you know, it, it's just as important as anything else. And the auto guy feels really good because he has a rough image. This softens it, makes him, you know, do, uh, you know, he's seen as a much nicer person, and it makes him a nicer person. So there's lots of lots of interesting things going on there. So I'm sure there must have been policy changes because in the past, if you had an accident in India on a particular road, people were, you know, refusing to come close to your touch here because of, you know, police involvement and a lot of bureaucracy hassles. So I think over a period of time, that has evolved, and people are more willing now. So. Uh, do you have to deal with that? Uh, so that has changed. Actually, the law has now changed completely. Earlier, you, it was a police case. The doctor couldn't touch you till the police guy registered right. a case. That's all gone. Earlier, you couldn't go to any hospital. You had to go to a hospital that had an emergency ward. Today, the law is that any hospital cannot turn you away. Second is, if it's a medical legal case, to use the term, First, you have to treat the patient. You don't have to wait for any police report or whatever. And now a Good Samaritan law has been passed that you cannot, you know, uh, earlier Good Samaritans didn't want to be Good Samaritans because they would get into trouble. That law has just been passed. So hopefully uh, a lot of that will be history. Uh, people still don't want to get involved, but using an auto as an ambulance is no problem because you've got a record where I called the per ambulance, the auto to go pick up that person. So it becomes pretty simple. Mm, I think it's a great scalable model, Arjun. Thank you. Yes. Thank you Thank for coming you. and sharing. Not at all. Thank you.